Chapter 1 The World Section 1 The sea becomes a mulberry field. People are always forgetful. After walking a journey of life, we must always stop unconsciously and sort out the gains and losses of the previous time. If the gains outweigh the losses, it proves that this time nothing is wasted. And we prepare for the next journey with ecstasy. If the loss is greater than the gain, it proves that all this time we have been lived to the dog. But we can't wait to turn back time and space and live again. There is no regret medicine in the world. So, what is lost cannot be recovered. Even if you run faster than loose yang. This is a universal law of life. Are there really no exceptions in an age where even Newton's laws can be overturned? There is one or two super scientific things that are understandable. Yunya had just taken the regret medicine. But the effect of the medicine was a little stronger. So, when he found himself standing naked in the wilderness. In addition to being in a daze, he was still in a daze. The moor was beautiful. With a carpet of turquoise grass stretching from your feet to the end of your vision. And the occasional few wild flowers sticking out of the grass added a bit of color to this blanket. A pheasant scurried up from the grass. Startling Yunya for a moment. Only then did he wake up from his days. His eyes were refreshed. And his mind was awake from his ignorance. Where is this Yunya asked himself. Ten minutes ago. He was still carrying a backpack and searching for the two missing foreigners on the Gobi. But then he was standing naked on the grassland. This was beyond the scope of his comprehension. He looked at the scorching sun overhead. Which he was still familiar with. Yunya was sure that he was still on the earth. Low elm trees and scattered locust trees were quietly mixed in the middle of the half-human tall wild artemisia grass. Which made him feel at ease. Since it's in the northwest, it's not a big deal. Just go back and walk a few more steps. Yunya estimated that he had encountered the legendary wormhole and had walked from the front to the back of the paper. And it was pure luck that he didn't get out of the range of the paper. It has been 15 years since he begged for a living in this northwest wilderness. And he had seen sandstorms, mudslides, quicksand, wolves, and big ants. The nerves had long been very tough. And now it was not surprising that he had encountered wormholes. The wind blew. And his whole body was cold. In the northwest of May. It was not yet the temperature that made people run bare. He remembered that before he came out. He replenished water at the sixth drinking point. And saw a golden light flashing at the bottom of the pool. Thinking that it was a natural gold nugget. And reached out to fish. Only to be brought here by a huge suction. No wonder greed is the original sin of life. Yunye slapped his right hand fiercely. Let you be greedy. This time you will get into trouble. Covering his key parts. He was looking for the water hole everywhere. When he went around for the fourth circle. The sound of whooshing water finally came to his ears. Under the great joy. Three or two steps. He rushed to the water's edge. Only to see a clear stream slowly flowing in the grass. Walking up along the stream. After a while. He reached the source of the stream. 
A pile of clothes covered the exit of the stream. Rolling up and down with the water waves. Yunye took back all his clothes. Including shoes and socks. And even a frying pan. Which Yunya used to cook instant noodles. Wringing out his clothes and spreading them out to hang on the small tree next to him. Yunya breathed a long sigh of relief and finally didn't have to run naked. If you give me back the backpack, I won't want anything more. Yunya spread out his hands and looked at these white and tender hands, which were a whole circle smaller than his own hands before. This was not a pair of adult hands at all. He had already discovered that problem. But he tried not to think about it. He grabbed his hair scattered on his shoulders with his back hand. And pulled it hard. It hurt. Which was not a dream. Turning his head to look at the familiar immature face in the water. Yunya faintly felt that things were not as simple as he had thought. Survival comes first. You can go without clothes in the wilderness. But you must wear shoes. And running. A genetic instinct from ancestors. Is clumsy but the most effective way to escape. Yunya knew that the water source in the wilderness was not a safe campsite. With the slimmest hope. He forcibly endured the fear from his heart. Staring at the spring water in the hope that God would open his eyes and return the backpack to himself. This was a virgin land that no one had ever visited. The breath of desolation enveloped this quiet land. Yunya knew that he was just a mechanical technician. If he wanted to survive, he must not lack equipment. Only when he got the equipment. He could have food. And he could rely on tools to make this 14 or 15 year old body survive. Yunya shook the heavy suede boots on his feet. The wet leather boots were indescribably uncomfortable on his feet. And with every step he took. He would make a sound flutter. Flutter. Holding an egg thick wooden stick in his hand. He was pumping the grass twice from time to time to give himself courage. The gods and Buddha seemed to hear his appeal. And a green canvas belt floated out from the water outlet. Yunye's eyes lit up. He leaned over to grab the belt. And pulled it out hard. Only to hear a loud sound. The half-human high backpack jumped out of the water. Yunya hugged the backpack tightly. This was fate. He pulled out the sapper shovel with his back hand. And his mind was settled. There was a piece of red sandstone not far from the stream. But there was no grass on it. Yunya transferred the site to it and carefully made a flat land. The red sandstone was baked hot by the sun and he threw his wet clothes on the stones. Believing that it would not take an hour for the clothes to be dried out. The tent was erected. With gaps on all sides to allow the hot air to carry away the moisture from the tent. After checking that the full set of equipment was in good condition. Yunya let out a long sigh of relief. He had long lost hope for the locator. The more delicate the thing. The easier it was to be damaged. This was common sense. The compass still stubbornly pointed to the north. Even if it was filled with water. After determining the location on the map with the intersection method. He was surprised to find that his position had not changed in any way from before. How is this possible could it be that the compass is broken? After observing the plants, Yunya dismissed the idea that the compass was broken. 
and he was puzzled. The powerful cottage mobile phone has no signal. He looked at the outline of the distant mountains. Except for the overgrown trees. Wasn't it the desolate Gobu? Didn't the wormhole change my location? But did it change time? Yunya buried his head between his knees. His head was as big as a bucket. And his mind was confused. The word crossing. Which he had always thought was coined by a novelist. Was now happening to him. Yunya had always thought that he was a family lover. And his mother. Wife. And son constituted the strongest fortress in his heart. If it was just a matter of distance. He didn't think it was a problem. Even on Mars. He'd kidnap the little green men and let them send him home. But it was not a distance. It was more than a thousand years. In the Northwest. No to be precise. The disappearance of the forests in Longzhong was a matter after the Tang Dynasty. And the rapid changes in the climate and the rapid expansion of the population caused an ecological catastrophe. As a native of Longzhong, Yunya knew better than others what this green color represented. Tang Nao or Han or even Qin don't be the northern and southern dynasties. I'm just a small person. I can't afford too much responsibility. Yunya muttered incoherently. The air was pure. The scenery was beautiful. And even the rabbits around were kind. Hiding in the shadows beside Yunya and comforting him. The roaring stream took away the red blood stains. And Yunya looked at the fat rabbit with bright eyes. His stomach was already hungry. Yunya munched on the delicious rabbit meat. The fat slipped from the corners of his mouth from time to time. The bonfire in front of him was still burning. The sun had set and the red glow in the sky pressed on the top of the mountain. And the large and small homing birds threw themselves into the forest in the distance. Yunya couldn't help but feel sad in his heart. Holding half a roast rabbit and crying. The boundless cold air woke Yunya from his sleep. Last night. He seemed to have returned to the hustle and bustle of the previous world. The tenderness of his wife. The rebellion of his son. And the nagging of his mother reappeared in front of him again. He wiped his face and drove away the last trace of nostalgia. Survival is the most important thing in front of us. And only by living can we talk about anything else. Today. We must face a new life thoroughly. The bonfire was lit again. The leftover rabbit meat from yesterday was roasted on the fire. And the boiling water was slowly eaten in one bite. Food was precious. And after sucking the last trace of oil and gas on his bones, Yunye's will was also firm. He couldn't always live alone in this wilderness like a wild man. Human beings are social creatures with various emotional needs. Living alone will only lead to atavism. Language functions will deteriorate. Brain functions will deteriorate. And the limbs will be strengthened. Yunya didn't want to be a savage in the wasteland. Where is the road? Lu Sun said that when more people are walking, there will be a road. But Yunye was the first person to set foot in the wasteland. So. You can only open the way yourself. After walking less than a mile. Yunye was out of breath. How much physical strength could a 14 or 15 year old boy count on? 
not to mention carrying more than 30 pounds of equipment. No matter what, Yunye decided to walk along the stream. After all, he was going to merge into the Yellow River. The cold water of the stream made his feet almost unconscious. The sun on his head burned his scalp. And the thatch by the stream grew green and long. Cutting his cheeks like a knife. And in a short time. He made red marks on the left and right of his face. Hot and cold. That's how typhoid fever goes. Yunye saw that there was a huge sandy land in front of him. Two acres. He hurriedly walked a few steps. And as soon as he stepped on the red sand, a black shadow pounced on him. And he was terrified. And instinctively swung his shovel to cut at the black shadow. Only to hear a miserable scream of BAA. A gray wild goat fell into the stream. And the splashing stream wet his body. The goat fell into the stream and struggled desperately to get up. Probably with a shovel breaking its leg. And just turned over. It fell into the water again. Seeing its painful appearance. Yunya had no choice but to raise the steel shovel again. The rabbit leg that I ate in the morning had long since been digested. And my stomach was rumbling again. Half the size eats the poor man. And Yunya has returned to this embarrassing age. He sighed for a long time. Took out the Ingisha knife. And began to dissect the poor sheep. The entrails of the sheep are left only with the heart and kidney. And the other entrails are buried deep under the sand. Yunya's cooking skills. With the unremitting efforts of his wife had been improving rapidly. After a full meal of roast lamb, the spicy aftertaste still rippled in his mouth. The rest of the lamb was finely smoked with lemongrass. And who would have thought that the green thatch, which was common in the northwest, would be an excellent ingredient for smoking mutton. Yunye was once again proud of his strong public relations skills. And he almost swallowed his tongue when he tasted the roast mutton of the old Uyghur man for the first time. A set of Yingjisha knives. Plus, a week's work in vain. Took out the secret recipe from the old man's mouth. And the most important thing was the thatch everywhere. For this reason. The old man almost turned his face with him. Although it is a bit cheap to use for smoked meat. This early summer weather is not handled in this way. And flies from all over the world can be attracted in a few hours. After thanking the sheep sincerely. And putting on his sun-dried clothes. Yunye once again embarked on a journey to find the crowd. The stream turns at the foot of the mountain and flows eastward. As is the case with 99.9% .9 of the world's rivers. And this stream is no exception. Yunye walked with this stream for three days. Except that the trees were getting fewer and fewer. And the grass was getting thinner. The city on the map was nowhere to be seen. As far as the eye could see, the whole basin was not inhabited at all. The green grass spread all over the earth. And among the grasses, occasionally a small bird swished straight to the sky. And a large flock of wild horses galloped and frolicked on the grass blanket. The raised mane was illuminated by the sun into thousands of gold and silver threads and the yellow sheep lowered its head to graze among the grass, and then stretched out its neck to look into the distance. 
Even the pheasant flapped its wings twice in the undisguised air and then sprang up again among the grass. The wind blew the scent of grass. There were all kinds of life in the air. And nature is so beautiful. Yunya completely collapsed. What kind of broken scenery is this? What about my concrete forests? What about the roar of my car? What about the acid gas emitted from my factory? What about my heavy industry chimneys? What about my municipal party committee building that is full of the atmosphere of the times and is constantly scolded? Where's my most cherished plastic bag flying in the sky? What about the people I hate? What about the hustle and bustle of the city that broke me? What about the rotten, smelly piles of urban garbage? My relatives, where are you? Don't leave me alone. Yunya lay on his back on the soft grass. Tears flowing like a flood that opened the floodgates. It's just a dream. And the sea becomes a mulberry field. <laughs>